I think the secret to success, it doesn't matter if you come from a little village or from a big town. There's one thing that you have to do, and that is you have to first of all work your ass off. And number two, you have to have a very clear vision of where you want to go. You have to be brave. You have to be tough. You have the discipline to follow through. And uh, it is very important that you don't listen to the naysayers. Because in every step of the way, when you make decisions like, I want to be a bodybuilding champion in the, of the world, people say, this is impossible, this is an American sport, it's never going to happen. Uh, when I went in, wanted to be in the movies, they said, you have an accent, it's never going to happen. No one ever became a leading man when you have an accent. Everything is always impossible until someone does it. Trust yourself, break some rules, don't be afraid to fail, ignore the naysayers and stay hungry. Let me tell you, I've made a fortune in several careers and I've been very successful in several careers by ignoring the naysayers and believing in myself. Imagine you're 15 years old and you're in Austria and you say to the people, I want to be the bodybuilding champion of the world. Of course they come to you and say, but wait a minute, this is not an Austrian sport. Bodybuilding, that's an American sport. But you know something, I had it very clear in my vision and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a bodybuilding champion. And I started training one hour a day, two hours a day, three hours a day. By the time I was in military service, at the age of 18, I trained four or five hours a day. And I became the youngest Mr. Universe ever. The youngest world championship at the age of 20. So much for it can't be done. And right after that, because like I said, you have to be hungry, I went after my next goal, which was to come to America. I came over here with empty pockets, but full of dreams, full of desire. I knew that this was where I could continue my bodybuilding career and start acting also, go into the acting profession. So I, I immigrated here and I kept training and training hours every day, five hours, six hours a day, and won one world championship after the other. By the time I was finished with bodybuilding, I won 13 world championship titles, more than anyone. And then again, I was hungry to move on because you can't do bodybuilding for the rest of your life. I wanted to move on and I knew it was acting that I wanted to get into. But again, I faced the same obstacles where people said it can't be done. When I talked to agents and they said to me, you cannot become just an actor and walk into movies. I say, I just don't want to become an actor. I want to be a leading man. They say, well, forget about that. And they laughed. I mean, with your accent, no one has become a leading man with your accent. And with your body, look at all those bumps sticking out. This overdeveloped body they were in 20 years ago when they did Hercules movies, but now it's Dustin Hoffman, it's Al Pacino, it's Woody Allen. Those are the new sex symbols, don't you understand it? Look at you. Forget it, it will never happen. And with your name, Schwarzen Schnitzel or whatever your name is, I can see that already up there in the billboards. That isn't going to sell any tickets. But you know something? I didn't listen to them. I started working very hard, just like in bodybuilding five, six hours a day, I went to acting classes, speech classes, dialogue classes, accent removal classes, everything that you can think of I did. And slowly everything started happening. All of those liabilities that they talked about started turning into assets. When I did Conan the Barbarian, the director came to me and he said, if we wouldn't have you, we would have had to build one. And on Terminator, the director said, I couldn't imagine to have anyone play Terminator that wouldn't have an accent and that wouldn't have your body. I cannot imagine the line, I'll be back with a normal American accent. It works so perfectly that you have this German accent. So all of those things that they say the liabilities became an asset. The moment, as the moment went on, it grew and grew and I went from one movie to the next, started making more and more money and then I ended up being the highest paid actor with $30 million on Terminator 3. That just shows you again so much for it can't be done. This is why I try to tell you anything and everything can be done if you can visualize it, if you believe in yourself.
never give up and never be afraid of failure because otherwise you box yourself in and you limit yourself. I was never afraid to fail when I ran for governor. I was never afraid to fail to tackle anything because you should not be afraid of failure. That's just part of life. Work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. I'm a big believer in there is no such thing as a self-made man. Because so many times people say that you're self-made man, you're the perfect example of the American dream and this and that. And these are all great compliments, but the reality is as I always say that you can call me anything you want. You can call me Arnie, Schwarzi, uh, Governator, Schnitzel, whatever you want to call, but don't ever call me self-made man. Because I would not be here if I wouldn't have had parents that were dedicated and gave us the love and the affection and the discipline and all of the stuff right from the beginning. I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't have had the help from so many bodybuilders in Graz that helped me. Then all the way to Munich, Albert Busek, then Joe Weider that brought me to America. He brought me to America and he gave me the confidence. He paid for the first apartment in Santa Monica. Without that, I wouldn't have made it. So how can I say that I'm a self-made man? Including when I was governor, I had five million people voting for me. Every one of those people that voted for me helped me to become governor. Mm -hmm. How can I say that I made myself, right? So this would be nonsense, ludicrous. Uh, so this is why I say those are the things that I think were important for me to be successful. And like I said, it doesn't matter then from what village you come from anyway. You have to recognize that. And those are kind of the elements that make one successful. Right away from bodybuilding on, uh, when I worked out, I didn't just lift for myself. I wanted to lift the entire sport. I always was interested to work towards something that is bigger than me. Something that is going to be around much longer than me. I'm going to be gone one day, but bodybuilding should not be gone. No matter how successful you get, no matter how old you get, you always have to be hungry for more. You always have to be hungry for learning new things because you never learn enough. I, for instance, learned when I grew up, I always thought that greatness was directly tied to fame and fortune. I thought that the big career and the money and the achievement would equal success. But I was dead wrong. But I learned that later on. I learned that totally by coincidence. When the University of Wisconsin did a research program on what effect weight training would have for Special Olympians, for intellectually challenged people. They called me. They said, Arnold, you're the expert in this subject. We want you to come up to the university and to help us with our program. To help us with our Special Olympians. And I flew up to the University of Wisconsin and I helped. And there were these kids the first exercise we decided to do was bench press and they were all standing in line. The first kid laid down on the bench. I put a 40 pound barbell over his chest and he did a simple exercise of bench press. He did 10 reps. Then he got up and then the next one laid down. I put the barbell over his chest and then that kid started breathing really heavy and all of a sudden he started screaming really loud. And he jumped up, I pulled the bar back, and he started shaking. I realized that he was scared of the weight. So I calmed him down, I said, that's okay. Just watch your friends do the bench press, and maybe you want to try it again. And the friends came through, and they did all the bench press, and everyone did great performance, and then all of a sudden, he stood in line on the end. And tried again. He laid down this time, I gave him the empty bar, just the 20 pounds. And he did 10 reps. And then I said, you want to have more plates on it? More weight? He said, yes. So I put two more plates on it. Now it was back to the 40 pounds that he had earlier. And he did 10 more reps. Then he said more. Then I put two more plates on it. Now it was 60 pounds, he did another 10 reps. 
and he said more. He did then 80 pounds. Then I lifted the weight off and he jumped up, high-fived everyone and he was so excited. And I was, it was a real eye-opener for me because when I saw that kid going from terror, to self-confidence in a short period of time. So I want you to remember, have a vision, think big, ignore the naysayers, work your ass off and give back and change the world. Because if not us, who? If not now, when?